In this video, I'm going to create a simple queue service that talks from server to client. And on the server side, we're going to create a whole bunch of messages really quickly, but we're going to have a queue that parses them out in a way that you can read them on the client side. For instance, when you're entering a game or you throw a grenade and you blow up a bunch of monsters, you may get a whole bunch of events and you want to display it to the user, but you want to display it so that they can read it. Let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to hit the play button and then pretty soon we're going to get three messages rapidly boom on the server side and then you're going to see them display slowly on the client side let's go ahead and get started with that i created an empty base plate for my queue service there's nothing in it i'm going to start off by going to replicated storage hit the plus add a remote event because we're going to be talking from server to client I'm going to call the remote event info message re and we're going to need something to generate messages for our test. Let's go to server script service, hit the plus, add a script and I'll call this uh, message gen. There we go. Let's get rid of our print statement and get a variable for replicated storage. I'll call it rs game get service replicated storage. And then in replicated storage, I'm going to get my info message remote event or info message RE. It is in replicated storage. We'll do a wait for child info message RE. Now type in game players to get the player service. We'll get the player added event from the player service. Connect that to an anonymous function where the player gets passed in. Uh, we could do a print statement just so we know that we've we haven't made any mistakes up to this point. We'll do player added. And then perhaps wait five seconds just so that you uh, you can you can view stuff in the world before things start firing off. You get in there all right. And then I'm gonna do a prep statement. I'm gonna say print sending messages. So I know that if I'm waiting too long after that, something has failed. If I'm waiting at all after that, something has failed. I'm going to make a for loop for i equals 1 to 3. We'll do three messages in steps of 1, do. Make a variable for your message. And what I say, I, I call this something like this, is message number, put a space, uh, speech quote, dot, dot, i. So we're going to concatenate the number on our string with these two dots. Now, what should I do? Uh, we, let's print it out. Print server side message. And I'll just do MSG. What else? We will fire, let's fire our remote event. So we're gonna fire the remote event. Nothing's there to catch it yet, but we'll go ahead and fire it. Fire client. You're gonna need the player to pass it to and the message. All right, let's try this out. We should only be able to see stuff on the server side now because we didn't do anything with the client side. I'll hit the play button. We'll go to view, output. Do I get my output window? View, output, there it is. And there's our messages. So we had our player added, sending messages. We've got our three messages. Let's go ahead and turn off our game and work on the client side stuff now. So I'll just turn this off. And I'm going to close this window right here. Let's go to our starter GUI because we're going to do this stuff and we're going to display messages with the, with the GUI. So let's hit the plus sign, screen GUI. And then on the screen GUI, I'm going to do a local script. And the local script, I'm going to call this uh, process MSG script. On the client side, we are also going to have to Get a variable for our info message re that's the gateway so we have to connect on both sides let's get a variable for replicated storage game get service replicated storage and then i'm going to get a variable for info what i call that info message re i probably should have just copied it from the other one re replicated storage wait for child info message re uh, I'm also going to get a variable for my message queue. It's basically just going to be a table, but a queue is something 
where when you put messages in it, the first one out is going to be the first one in. That's why they call it a queue as opposed to a stack. Like if you stack something, the last thing on the stack is going to be the first thing you pull off or they, they say pop, they pop, you pop something off the stack, but the queue, the first one in is going to be the first one out. Now I'm going to put messages in my message queue. So we have our info message RE that's firing messages off. We can capture them by doing our message info RE on client event, connecting that to an anonymous function. If you remember on the other side, we passed in the player and the message. The player is used to get to you, right? This is a local script running locally on your computer. So we don't have the player here. We're just going to get the MSG, the message. Then I'll use this table insert to insert my message into this table. And here's the message. We didn't provide an index, so it's just going to put the message on the end. So this queue is going to continue to get messages. We need to process the messages or else it doesn't really pay to have a queue. So let's do a function, local function, process MSG. Right. And then we're going to do a while loop and I'll just put a wait in here. So we'll pull every two seconds, maybe every one second. We don't want to wait that long. And so while wait one second do, let's check for if there are messages in our queue. I'm going to look for the number of messages in our MSG queue. Check to see if it's greater than zero. If it is, I'm going to process a message. And right now our processing just means printing it. So I'll do a client side process MSG queue, whoops, MSG queue bracket one. We're going to get the first message in the queue. Remember first in first out. Then we're going to remove, we'll do a table remove MSG queue that first that first message right there. And then the other condition that can happen is if the queue is empty. So if there's nothing in the queue, we'll do a print. The queue is empty. And we need to call this, but we don't want it to interrupt anything. It's got an infinite while loop, so we have to be careful of that. Let's go down to the bottom. I think I'm just gonna spawn process message in its own thread. So we're just going to spawn this off and then it's going to start running. It's not going to interfere with this script right here. All right, let's try it out. I'm going to hit the play button. We're going to go to my view tab. I'm going to hit the output. Queue is empty and boom, we got some messages. And you can see that they printed out one a second after that. And then the queue is empty again. That's pretty cool. Let's add a UI and then we can actually start displaying the message to the user in a way that would make sense for a player in a game. Let's turn off our game. And then I'm going to close this window here so I have more room. I'm going to go back to my game window. On the screen GUI, I'm going to hit the plus sign and add a text label. All right, the text label, I'm going to call this info message info msg label all right i'm going to go to anchor point on my info message label make that 0.5 and 0.5 kind of moves up the label a little bit we'll go to position i'll make this 0.5 scale on the x zero pixel offset 0.5 scale on the y zero pixel offset there we go and for size, let's try maybe 20% of the screen on the X, zero pixel offset, 20% on the Y, zero pixel offset. So 0 0.2 comma zero comma 0.2 comma zero. That's not bad. We'll go down and change. I'm not gonna change a lot of stuff. You could decorate this as much as you want. Maybe go to San, uh, San Source Pro, the font, font base. Let's get our comic font and that's pretty small. So maybe text scaled, cool. And then maybe change the text color, like green or something, bright, colorful, hard to see. 
So we get our text stroke transparency that I'll put a little outline around it, around our text, make that zero. The default color for that is black, which I usually keep. And let's get rid of the background color or the background itself on our info GUI. Let's go all the way up to the top. Background transparency, set that to one. All right, so we have a relatively simple GUI here that we're going to call. I'm going to grab this thing. I'm going to drag it on up to replicated storage. We are going to create one of those little message GUIs every time we process a message. So my process message script is right here. It is under the screen GUI if you lost it. All right, so up here, we got our replicated storage. This is where we're keeping our UI stuff. Let's do a local, and what do we call that? Info message label. Info, uh, I think I'll just call this LBL, right? Because I don't want it too close to my remote event. And we will get replicated storage, wait for child, info message LBL. All right, I think I might call that LBL template. That's even better. That is going to be the template that I'm going to create these messages for, or these uh, these GUIs with. So I'm going to go down where we print. We're not going to print anymore. We are going to create a label. So local LBL equals LBL template clone. Let's make the parent of the label the same as the script's parent. So LBL parent will equal the script dot parent. So we're going to put it on the screen GUI. All right, what else do we need? We need to change the text. LBL text equals, and we got our message queue, right? Message queue one. And we want to make sure we do that before we remove it. Now I want it to slide, I want it to be displayed and then go up off the screen. So how are we going to do that? This is just going to show it. I'm going to go to the top of my script and I'm going to get a couple more variables. I'm going to get one for the tween service, right? So tweening, tween service does animations. We'll do game, get service, tween service. And what else do I need? Tween info. And we did this for the coin stuff. I'm going to fill this one out a little more just for the sake of education. So we're going to do our tween info new. The first value is the time. I'll say one second. The second value is the easing style. How do you want it to move? And we're going to do a quadratic. We're going to start slow and then it's going to speed up as it gets farther up the screen. So we're going to do enum easing style dot quad. And whether it starts fast or it ends fast, is going to be determined by the easing direction, right? So out is where it's going to be faster on the exit. And then we have this here is repeat count. All right, so repeat count is going to be, going to be zero. We're not going to repeat it. What else do we need? Reverses? Nope, we'll make that false. What else should we do? The delay time. We need time to read it. Let's give it a two second delay before we start moving it. I'm going to put this on the next line. I have two lines here so you can see everything. All right? So we have, this is how, this is how long the tween will last, how it'll move, which direction uh, you could have like a bounce or whatever, but the speed is going to be at the end. And then you could read those that you have the the annoying pop-ups, they're, they're pretty helpful at start, but then after you've been coding for about two years, you're gonna get annoying. All right, so we got that. Um, what else do we need? Oh, the goal, right? I'm gonna define the goal of the tween here. That is the stop position when the tween is finished, where we're moving to, and how we're, do how we're doing the animation. We're gonna animate on position. So we want the position's goal to be equal to a universal dimension two dot new, and this is going to have the x scale 
uh, X pixel, Y scale, Y pixel. I'm gonna say 0.5 X scale, so halfway on the screen, zero pixel offset on the X, negative 0.5 on the Y for the scale, zero pixel offset. So the negative 0.5 is up above the screen where you can't see. We're gonna have it slide right up, just like the coin, but we're gonna have a little fancier easing stuff, right? All right, so we got that stuff taken care of. Now we go down here after we display our text. Let's go ahead and make a variable for the tween. TS create. And we got our LBL. We have our tween info and we have our goal. Cool. Now we need to play the tween. Tween play. And then... I forgot the equals. I do that a lot. Get the equals right there. Good. And now let's go ahead and do the tween, not tween info, tween wait for, what is it? On, oh, that's it, completed. That's the event. So that's going to fire when it's done. And we're going to wait here. That's going to induce a delay here, right? And it's going to be about three seconds, right? We got one second for the tween itself, but we have a two second delay so that when the thing pops up, it's gonna be there. So that's about a three second delay, that's not bad. At the end of all that, let's get our LBL and destroy it so we don't clutter up our uh, client stuff. I think I'm gonna get rid of this weight. Let's do a control X to cut it. I'll put a true here and then make sure you paste that weight down here, right? So this is gonna take three seconds. If there's nothing in the queue, we're gonna pull every one second. Let's try it out. Here we go. And oh, I should have my output. There it is, message one, message two, message three. That's pretty cool. Now. The queue itself, once the messages get in the queue, the order is guaranteed. It's gonna be first in, first out. However, how it gets from the server to the queue is not guaranteed. The way we've been doing it, it hasn't been a problem. The first one that gets created is the first one that gets to the queue, but these are asynchronous calls. These remote events are asynchronous calls and things could slow them down. There could be a mismatch in ordering, especially in a regular game where there's a lot going on. But I think this is good enough. Uh, they have to fire very close to the same time in order to get a confused order.